Welcome to the family people. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be uh, speaking about perfection in art. And so if you're a comic artist or an artist, there are a selected amount of times. There, is select, uh, there are specific times where you may want to be a perfectionist and times where you don't want to be a perfectionist. Now, some some of the good times you may want to be a perfectionist is when you're drawing buildings. Now, buildings are man-made. They're not natural. They're very static. They're very like a straight line. They're they go at a perfect uh, 90 degree angle and whatnot. They're calculated by angles, like exact specific angles. So that's a time where you want to be perfect. Grab a ruler to draw something man-made which is meant to be in the eyes of you know perfection and however if you are to draw a natural background or a organic human no ruler is involved is more so the capability of being loose because humans are loose they're very curvy there's no straight lines in nature if you look very closely there's a curve all the time and so if you were to draw something organic uh, these organic creatures or you know backgrounds they're they're loose they're free they're not strict like a, like a building and so if you're like one of the artists that wants to you know perfect their humans or whatnot they want to get their human a hundred percent and they aren't drawing as fast as they would like them to draw as they would like to draw they're not drawing as fast as they would like to draw you may fall into a specific category so I did a video prior called the psychology of sketching so if you're like a perfectionist when it comes to drawing uh, uh, organic creatures or so you may fall into the uh, the finalizer the finalizer category so there's a there's a spectrum so at one side of the spectrum is a is the sketcher and at another side of the spectrum is a finalizer and if again if you're a perfectionist you're falling to the uh, the finalizing category and you may want to look deeply into the the sketching aspect of your artwork to grow even further so that you can have a balance between the sketching and the finalizing art so I did a video on that you can go check that out and it dies more specifically into what I'm talking about so loose equals curve lines perfection equals straight lines perfection kills naturalism buildings aren't natural you defend against your own natural self when you try to reach a perfection level when it comes in terms of an organic creature like a human which makes me believe why do artists only use rulers to calculate a per exact precision when it comes to buildings however it's not being done with the uh, the human or anything other that's organic which is why i feel that it's already something that's inside you it's something natural for you to create as opposed to something that's a building however if you were to draw a cityscape for example a background with a bunch of buildings stacked together it won't be exact unless a ruler is used or involved within the making of the, uh, the cityscape. Now, it is possible to sketch it. However, it when sketching, it may not be exactly aligned with the vanishing points. When you're using a ruler, you can rotate the ruler at the point of where the vanishing point to have an exact precision. Because it's unnatural for us to produce something like that. And so if you were to draw a tree, a human, or the ocean, they're all curvy, so rulers aren't necessary. It's something that should be, that is built in within us as we train ourselves. And really and truly, it's all based on your style. So if you aim to have a kind of pixelated artwork or some kind of gaming artwork and add it, add some kind of uh, straight rectangular trees and and whatnot that's all according to your style and that's good and and I know in the uh, kindergarten in in first grade we used to do like these collages you know we would uh 
use scissors, you know, something that's man-made and meant to cut in straight lines. Yeah, we would use scissors to, you know, cut these, uh, for example, trees out to make wood. And it wouldn't look exactly like an organic tree because it has like straight lines, but it fits the, uh, the style of the, the collage you were going for. And there's a style in uh, 3D modeling called low poly, which has your uh, your entire environment modeled to look like a polygon, like a basic polygon shape, shapes with all sides. And you know how polygons are with their straight lines. And the low poly 3D style, it really looks sexy. Like it's really uh, it's really clean and it really fits a uh, unique style. And I used to like go for low poly a lot when it came to to 3D. And so, like, to keep in mind, although, like, they're, um, in low poly, the, the, they may be, like, straight lines within the trees for low poly 3D, if you were to draw something, you know, like a realistic tree or, you know, a natural looking tree, uh, that's when you want to, uh, come out of the straight lines and go more into the uh, curve, the curvilinear lines. So uh, here are some more examples of low poly straight lines. Uh, this may not be for 3D. This may have been like a, just a illustrative piece, but this looks really cool. You know, it really depends on what kind of style you're going for. So these, as you can see, they're low poly. They're like a polygon. They have a straight line angle to it. And if you're going for that, that's cool. And here's another one. You know, this is 3D. Look how sexy this looks. You see this? These are very, uh, you know, they're straight lines, they're trees. They may not look organic or natural or realistic, but there's just a certain element to it that just looks so sexy. I mean, just look at this. You know, it's, it's just so, it's so cool.